Breathing Space Fading Frontier includes mature content such as adult language, sexual situations, violence, and substance use. This episode contains discussion of traumatic workplace environment, implied gun violence, and murder. Additional sensory contact warnings can be found in the show notes. I ain't got no home to go to, I ain't got nothing to sell, but my stars will never leave me, even when I'm sold to hell. I was born under a blue sky, and I'll die out in the black. When I'm gone, don't no one mourn me, cause my debts will drag me back. In other news, Preston Jorgensen, CEO of Yukon, announced today that his company had reached a deal with Nebula Cola to complete one of the largest mergers in the company's history. Immediately following the announcement, Yukon stock skyrocketed. Ugh. Barky, turn that shit off, will ya? I paid good money for this hooch, and if I throw it up, I'm gonna demand a refund. Don't go work for Yukon, my dad said. He'd always just get a job with me at OCP. Well, sorry, Mom. I didn't listen. You ever devote yourself to a career and have all your hopes and dreams dash? Oh, okay. That's fine. No one wants to talk to the drunk guy. Don't worry, I can take a hint. Not gonna flip out or anything, just gonna sit here and sip my drink while my star implodes into a black hole of nothingness. Rough day, huh? (sighs) More like a rough decade. And can you believe these people just going about their lives while mine has been so cosmically... uh... Fucked? Yeah. Fucked. Well, I'm here, friend. And I'm listening. Why don't you tell me all about it? (laughs) I gave that company ten years of my life. I went to every training seminar, every bullshit leadership retreat. I was well on my way to becoming the youngest tenacious brown sugar maple in the history of the org, which would have earned my loyal liaison one hell of a raise, I am sure. And in the end, I was just as expendable as any other Yukon employee. Right. Sounds like a truly thrilling existence there, Mr... Mikhail. My friends call me Mick, and... To be honest, no. But it was a job I was good at. And you can imagine a company like Yukon requires a skilled public relations team to handle the fallout of their less than ethical business practices. And I was one of the best. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not convinced spinning corporate propaganda is something to be proud of. So, what did you do to get yourself jettisoned? They wanted me to cover up a series of on-the-job deaths that had occurred at the hands of Mounties by using the IT department and their automated drones as a scapegoat. When I refused and tried to take it to management, they leaked the story of me covering up the deaths anyway and then used it as an excuse to fire me. (laughs) I'm sorry. I want to say I'm surprised that happened, but we... Oh, no, that will be a lie. The worst part, after they tossed me into the vacuum, they slapped me with a bill for all the expenses I racked up living on the company orbital. Said that if I didn't pay them back everything I owed, they would take legal action. That I could end up in a private prison colony on some asteroid somewhere for the rest of my life. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Hmm... It's almost like they want you to be unable to pay so they can throw you in prison for free labor. Your your ability to empathize is impeccable. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have sorrows to drown. Well, but, 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 but. 
What if I told you there was a way you could pay off your debt to Yukon and, in the process, also give a big fuck you to Preston Jorgensen? What? Look, don't ask me why. But for some reason, I like you. And I want to help. So, I'm going to be very straight with you. I'm very good at stealing things. Like, extremely good. In fact, I stole your wallet, your watch, and your fancy fountain pen right here, just sitting here talking to you. What? Give me those! Okay, okay, don't get your starch car keys in a twist. The point is, I have certain skills, and you have insider knowledge. Together, we could pull off the heist of the century, both get paid, and you could get revenge on the company that ruined your life. What do you think? What do I think? I think, I, I, I think I'm gonna puke. Are you okay in there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think I'm fine. So, are you in? You're serious. As a punctured exosuit. <sighs> All right then. I'm in. Splendid. Oh, you can call me Bridger, by the way. Looking forward to doing business with you, Bridger. <clears throat> Tomorrow. you know all about leafs and how to attain them, you're ready to start your journey as an innovative green paper bark. I'll leaf it to your loyal training coordinator to answer any questions you may have as you continue your onboarding process here at Yukon. And remember, you can't spell Yukon without you. That was insufferable. Mm-hmm. And what are leafs again? Leaf, which stands for Leadership, Empowerment, Aptitude, and Function, are a form of ranking system within Yukon used to measure an associate's success within the company. Ugh. Anyway, there are four basic levels of leaf. Green is the lowest, followed by gold, then red, and finally brown. Each level is divided into sub-levels, and each sub-level into a sub-sub-level. Each of these level names added together is called your branch. Perfect. Now we only have 36 training hollows to go before you're ready to convincingly portray the broken spirit of a Yukon associate. Please, no more, I beg you. All right, all right. I think you've earned yourself some dinner. What are you in the mood for? I've always been a fan of Olympus Mounds. Isn't that the one with the scantily clad servers selling overpriced beer and Martian cuisine? Yeah. What? Their mouth-watering Mons Meat Substitute and Medusa fries are really good. Shut up, don't judge me. All right, sticky fingers, but you're buying. And we're getting takeout. Oh, damn. This is even more delicious than I remember. How are you, Tharsian Zingers? Whew, spicy. Oh, yeah, here, wash it down with my shake. Oh, that's... Oh, God, is that a beer-flavored shake? That's disgusting. You are disgusting. <laughs> I guess. It's more of an acquired taste. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? If we're going to be working together, I should at least know something about you. Ah, uh, not much to tell. Grew up in New Philly, parents were factory workers. Pretty normal life. Huh. That's weird. Huh? What is? It's just, I thought for sure there would be some kind of tragic backstory of why you ended up becoming a thief. Orphaned and stuck in foster homes, or an absentee parent, something. But you're just a normal guy. 
Yeah. Sorry to disappoint. Life outside of being a thief is pretty boring. How about you? Oh, my parents are Terran. Dad was a master sergeant in the army, and Mom worked for Omni Consumer Products, a, a company that contracts with the URA. That's how they met. So, I guess you could say the corporate structure and military discipline are in my blood. I grew up in a small town on the outskirts of Old Savannah, but I always dreamed of going off-world. When I was 20, I met a Yukon recruiter while I was handing out flyers for a local diner, and they convinced me to apply. Next thing I knew, I was on a flight headed for the unit. I'm sorry? The unit? Get your mind out of the trash compactor. It stands for Yukon New Hire Intake. It's an orbital where they process all new hires. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's what you tell all the boys. Why would you even want to work for a company like Yukon? Hadn't you heard about all the terrible things they've been doing? Well, news travels pretty slow on Terra, especially in a place like the URA. Regardless of what I may have heard, the prospect of working for a company with the reach that Yukon had had me sold instantly. I was going to see the system. I was going to work for the fastest growing conglomerate in the history of ever, and I was going to be free. And for the most part I was, at least as free as an employee of Yukon can be. I drank the Kool-Aid almost immediately, convinced myself that if I kept my head down and towed the company line that one day I'd be seated in that ivory tower with the man himself, Preston Jorgensen. And it worked. As I climbed the corporate ladder, earning leaf after leaf, I eventually got my dream job in PR. I was able to acquire a level of status within the org that afforded me certain benefits that other folks at Yukon could only dream of. Plush living quarters, top-of-the-line medical care, quality food. Life was pretty great. So what made you decide to go against the grain? You had to know you were risking your way of life. If they would have asked me a week earlier to spin that story, I would have done it in a heartbeat. But it just so happens that very same week I happened to witness one of the incidents firsthand. I'd never seen so much blood before in my life. The Mountie had turned the order fulfillment manager into ground meat, and there he was, just yucking it up with his buddies like nothing happened while a janitorial specialist cleaned up the mess he had made. It made me sick to my stomach. After that, I couldn't in good conscience cover up what was going on. That's... wild. But, I mean... At least somebody in that company had a conscience. That's the thing. Most of the people there are just trying to survive. They aren't bad people. Most just want to feed their families, have shelter from the vacuum of space, and access to a doctor. The rest have been indoctrinated into the company culture, and trust me, they can be very persuasive. Hell, Yukon has been around so long that they even have a whole generation of workers who grew up on their orbitals and in company towns across the system. Starting at age 13, kids of Yukon workers can join Yukon's Youths, an organization devoted to teaching kids skills that only apply to Yukon jobs that use Yukon technology. Working for Yukon is like joining a cult, only instead of promising you eternal life, they promise you upward mobility and enhanced earning potential. And the echo chamber is so loud that you can barely tell which thoughts are yours and which thoughts came from the org. <laughs> Sorry, that's just been weighing on me for a while. Hey, man, it, it's all right. How about you just talk and I'll just listen? Uh, it, nah, I really shouldn't. Uh, plus, we have house planning we have to do. Planning can wait. We have plenty of time. Let's take the night off. Deal? Deal. Oh, my God, I am sorry for the misunderstanding, sir. From behind, you look just like my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, jeez, Mick. Buy a guy a drink first before you start grabbing his ass. I don't even know why we're doing this. You're the master thief. Why do I need to know how to pick pockets? Oh, because it's fun to watch you squirm. Ah, oh, but also, I only work with professionals. So if you want me involved in this job, I need to know that you're committed. Ready to go again? Not even remotely. Well, too bad, because I see a perfect mark. Go on the left with the wallet chain. Now, most people think that keeps their money safe, but it actually 
just gives pickpockets something to grab onto and pull the wallet out. Then it's as simple as unclipping the chain and letting him walk away. Are you sure about this? Sure, I'm sure. Just remember what I taught you. Talk to him, keep him engaged, make contact somewhere else on his body before you make the lift. That'll distract him from the motion of the wallet. You can do this. I believe in you. All right, fine. Hey man, watch where you're going. Oh, sorry, sir, I didn't see you there. I love this jacket. What is it made of? Uh, I think it's Martian leather. Oh, that's cool. W where did you get it? I've been wanting to buy my boyfriend a present and... Hey, what the hell? Are you trying to steal my wallet? I... Fuck! I think you broke my nose. I'll break more than that if you try that shit again. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, easy there, buddy. Babe, what did I tell you? You can't just go around grabbing other people's wallets. I'm so sorry. He's being treated for kleptomania. Here, there's 20 on this. Yukon Ganders. Go get yourself a drink on us. We're just, just going to go. Just, just keep walking and don't turn around. Are you smiling? This is not funny. My nose is bleeding. Oh, come on. It's kind of funny. And plus, it was a good learning experience. I bet you're never going to make the same mistakes again. I may never breathe through my nose the same way again. Oh, calm down. You to make it bleed more. You were enjoying this too much. Mm, you're probably right. But also, if you keep referring to me as your boyfriend, I'm going to start suspecting something. It was my cover. What was I supposed to do, say you were my brother? We have no family resemblance. I don't know. You're getting awful red in those cheeks. I was just punched in the nose. All right, all right. Let's get back to the hotel and we'll get some ice on it, you big baby. Le Duplessis is the name of Preston Jorgensen's private orbit. Of course it is. New Quebec was taken, am I right? You got it all out of your system now. No guarantees, but please do carry on. As I was saying, Le Duplessis is a massive orbital that houses its own Yukon fulfillment station and an Atmo bubble that is home to several gardens, Jorgensen's private zoo, and his palatial mansion. It's a heavily guarded fortress, nearly impenetrable unless you are personally invited by old PJ himself. What I like was the bit where you said nearly. So, what's the plan? How do I get in? Jorgensen is holding a gala event to celebrate Yukon's latest acquisition of Nebula Cola. All of Yukon's top shareholders and board members will be there. It's going to be a huge event. As for how you're getting in, the plan is twofold. I'm sure you're wondering why I've been having you watch Yukon training videos. You were torturing me for getting you punched in the face. You've been watching those videos so you can keep up with the jargon. Do you mean jargon? If you keep interrupting me, this briefing is going to last forever and we'll miss our window for the heist. <laughs> fine, fine. Please, continue. You need to understand the jargon because you will be going in disguised as a Yukon employee. For events like this, Jorgensen likes to offer overtime to select lower leaf employees, give them a chance to rub elbows with the big wigs and keep their dreams alive of rising through the ranks and going from attendant to attendee. Okay, but how am I supposed to get past security if the place is locked up tighter than a... Wait, did you hear that? Is there someone else here? Coming up next on the bit, demotion death worms. Fact or fiction? But first, enjoy some tunes from the black. Holy shit, where did you come from? Uh, sorry, I let her in while you're in the bathroom. She's so quiet, I forgot she was here. Bridger, this is... Sally and Maria Cortova, Princessa Gwynifer, Contessa de Marco Clark, oh, but you could just call me Chip. Right, so, you're a Wolf 585 girl, huh? 
Wait, you know Wolf 585? Do I know? <laughs> of course I do. It's the wildest outpost of Calistana hippies I've ever been to. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> ah, yeah. Good times. Well, thanks for stopping by, and uh, don't let the door hit you in the arse on the way out. Whoa, whoa, Bridger. Will you wait just a damn second? Chip here is a tech expert and one of those IT folks so that I told you Yukon wanted to frame. Frame? For the deaths. Deaths? The ones I was supposed to cover up. Oh, those deaths. Sure, 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 sure. Um, but how does this help us? Well, uh... If I may... Are you familiar with what a brute force attack is in hacking terms? Uh, I I am fairly sure we can both answer that question. <laughs> That's unimportant. What is important is that your current plan is like a brute force attack. But with me on your team, it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. Nope, still don't get it. The brute force or the... Oh, sorry, sorry. Fishing, it's, a, it's another hacking term. What I mean is, it's going to be as easy as pi out to the 32nd decimal place. Oh, great. So, getting in will be a piece of cake. You know all the back doors to all the systems. I just waltz in, do the job, get out. No one's any the wiser. Well, well that I could. But actually, Mick's statement about Le Duplessis being nearly impenetrable is uh, entirely wrong. The place is a fortress, with Rolex security codes that change every hour, 256 tetrabit encryption, and a near sentient security system with access to every form of law enforcement database, and a predictive algorithm that can determine threats with 99.9% .9 accuracy. Not to mention a full complement of CNC officers ready to descend on the place at the first sign of trouble. Okay, the bits of that that I understood didn't sound great. So how exactly are you helping? Oh, a magician never reveals her secrets. Then the magician doesn't get invited to the party, and I course you're into magic. Wait, what? no. I mean, no. It... Ooh, okay, fine. I was able to scrounge up a decommissioned yeet from a deregged blue line run by a guy named Mooster of Dezooster. Okay, putting that name aside, the acronyms are getting ridiculous. What exactly is a yeet? You know, a, a yeet. Or a Yukon exclusive employee terminal. It's a standard terminal that acts as your ID as well as your access portal to all of your Yukon employee information, benefits, all that sort of stuff. It's also a monitoring system used to track Yukon employee productivity. If an associate stops moving for too long, it delivers a painful, non-lethal shock. And I managed to outfit this little puppy with a virus. Once the guards scan your yeet at the gate, it'll upload said virus and blind the security system for us. Okay. Okay. Do I at least get to pick my name? Oh. Mick didn't mention you want to pick your name. I could try to make you a new... No, it's fine. You don't need to... What do you mean she doesn't need to? I want to pick my name. Would you stop being so difficult? It's a name you'll be using for all of a day. What does it matter? It matters because when I take on a persona, I have to become that person. To make it believable for the mark, I have to fully embody them. So if I don't like the name, that could well be a problem. Why don't you just let her tell you the name before you go all supernova? Fine. Chip. Pray, what is the name? Oh, um, I don't know. I've, you know, maybe I should just make a new, um... Chip, just tell him the damn name. John Smith? Is that spelled with an I-T-H? No, no, no. Don't be silly. Y-T-H. Wow. Yep, 
Sure. It's so crazy, it just might work. It has to work. It's our only shot at stealing Voyage vers l'Etoile. And you know you can just say Voyage to the Stars, right? Yeah, but Voyage vers l'Etoile is more fun. What's Voyage vers l'Etoile? It's a painting of the first ship designed for long-distance travel within the Sol system. It's one of Jorgensen's prized possessions and is listed as invaluable among art collectors, so I'm sure we can find a buyer who will pay us well. Oh, that's easy. I can reach out to some of my connections on the blue line. Um, sure, you could do that. Sick. So, um, since we're gonna be hanging out now, you guys wanna play Meteors and Boom Men? Is that another hacking thing? Wait, you're joking. No, you don't know M and M M. It's this classic holotop RPG, right? You play a group of explorers out in the vastest of space, fighting aliens, shooting laser blasters. Oh, it's so awesome! You know none of that stuff exists, right? Well, oh yeah, I, I know that, but it's fun to pretend. Well, on that note, I'm gonna go get some sleep. I'll see you two later. Try not to have too much fun without me. You sure you're not just going to work on your John Smith character? I have no idea what you mean. I'm approaching the compound now. Com check? Read any loud and clear? These comms chip cooked up are great. You're listening to Blue Line U317 The Bit. And this is your host, Chippy Chip, broadcasting to anyone who will listen this section of the black. Chip, you are not doing your radio show over our secure blue line right now, right? No, no, of course not. Sorry, folks. It looks like the man is shutting us down. Catch you on the flip side. Or, uh, should I say, the chip side? Can we... Focus up, please. I'm almost to the security checkpoint. You're sure this yeet or whatever is going to work, Chip? Yeah, I'm 98% sure it'll work. You're 98% sure that the system that is 99.9% accurate at detecting threats will be fooled? That is a larger margin of error than I was expecting. Well, I mean, come on. It's not an exact science. Yes, it is! It is literally called computer science! Bridger, if you don't chill out, you're gonna blow your cover. You have nothing to worry about. Alright. Fine. I am John Smith. I am John Smith. Hey there! John Smith reporting for duty. Yeet. Oh, yeah. Shucks. I almost forgot. I can be such a knucklehead sometimes. It's a wonder how I even made it to innovative brown box elder in the first place. You're a brown box elder. Did he just say brown box elder? Green, 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 you're a green box elder. Oh, yeah, I meant green, green, definitely green. Sorry about that. You know how us greens can be. All right, move along, greeny. Follow the hallway until you reach the main kitchen. You'll get your work assignment there. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Oh, hell yes. The elite thingy worked. I knew you could do it the whole time, Chip. Never doubted you for a second. <laughs> I knew I was a genius. Unlike Bridger, who can barely remember a sequence of four colors. In my defense, it's kind of strange for brown of all colors to be the best. You'd think it would be gold or anything other than brown. All right. According to the information I got from people who have worked inside the mansion before Voyage vers l'Etoile. The painting. Can we just call it the painting? Okay. The painting should be in the study in the southeast corner of the building. And Jorgensen? So, I was able to find his itinerary. He should be entertaining some guests in the Western Garden. 
Perfect. I can get into the study, grab the painting, stash it somewhere until the party's over. Then we walk out with it and Yogi Boy will be none the wiser. And where do you think you're going, mister? Oh, sorry. I, I think I got to turn around. This place is a maze. Well, don't you worry your pretty little head, darling. Miss Corinne is here to help. Follow me and I'll take you to the kitchen. Oh, great. Thank you so much. No, Bridger, what are you doing? This isn't part of the plan. No plan survives first contact. Sometimes you have to throw away the plan and improvise. I'm a professional. Trust me. I I'm sorry. What was that, dear? Oh, I was just thinking to myself how beautiful this place is. Do you work here on Le Duplessis full time? I do. I started out as a lowly stock girl, but with a lot of hard work and commitment, Mr. Jorgensen chose me personally to coordinate all of his lavish parties and events. I'm only a few more review cycles away from earning my brown leaf. Wow, that's so impressive. You know, I've always dreamed of someday visiting this place, ever since I was a little boy in the Yukon Youths. No kidding. You were a you you. Where'd you grow up? Oh, I grew up on Kestrel Fulfillment Orbital. Mom was a beaver and Dad was a nutrition technician at the R&R. &R. Ooh, sounds like your mama had good taste. Those NTs really know how to work a bioprinter. Bridger, would you stop fooling around to get back on mission? None of this character work is... Funny enough... Dad was never interested in running the bioprinters back at our quarters. Said the smell of the NEM made him sick after smelling it all day at work. So when I was old enough, I taught myself how to use them and started printing the family dinner every night. Well, isn't that just the sweetest thing I ever did hear? Your parents were very lucky to have you. Are they still working over on Kestrel? Mom's a fulfillment floor supervisor now, and... Well, Dad, he's not doing too well. Doctors say he's terminal. Best we can do now is just make him comfortable. Oh, you poor thing. I'm so sorry to hear that really bottom of my heart. Thanks, Corinne. I'm just glad we're part of the Yukon family. If it wasn't for all the care they provide, Dad would be much worse off. Ain't it the truth? Well... Here we are, the main kitchen. Maybe they'll be able to put your bioprinter expertise to good use. Have fun, hun. Actually, before I get started, do you think I could pay a visit to the little moose's room? <laughs> uh -huh, you almost got me there. You never mentioned you were such a cut-up. No, really. I, I have to go pee. I'll, I'll be right back. Huh. Didn't you say you're from Kestrel? Yes. Well, that is terribly strange, seeing as every associate on Kestrel was outfitted with a supercath bio-waste management system, an experimental attempt at limiting bathroom breaks while on the fulfillment floor. Really? Shit. Security! Bridger! Bridger, I swear to God, if you turned your comms off on me. No, he definitely turned his comms off. Ah, uh, some professional he is. It's like he's trying to screw up this job or something. I'm going in after him. Wait, Mick, is that... Are you sure that's a good idea? It's a terrible idea. But I gotta try and salvage this. If things go bad, take the ship and get out of here. I'm so glad you all could join me to celebrate this momentous occasion. I remember the first time I ever had a Nebula Cola. I was about 10 years old, and my family was on a road trip from Lunar York City to Lunago. We stopped to refuel, and my dad told me to man the pump while he went in to pay. I remember feeling like such a grown-up, being in charge of that fuel line. When my dad came back, he had brought me an ice-cold Nebula Cola as a reward for a job well done. It's fond memories like those that led to my decision to purchase Nebula Cola. 
to ensure that children and families have the opportunity to enjoy it for generations to come. I'd like to thank the Pemberham family for helping us ease into this transition, and I'd like to assure them that we here at UConn will do everything in our power to ensure the legacy of the late, great Caleb John Pemberham lives on. Thank you, and enjoy tonight's festivities. My parents were huge supporters of the Terran Wildlife Fund. Through them, I developed a love of animals. But with so much of their natural habitats being destroyed, the only way to experience their beauty nowadays is in a zoo. Which is why I built one here. The crown jewel, of course, is Magda the Moose and her son, Monty. It's been a joy watching Monty grow here. Uh, could you excuse me for a moment? Where is he? Where's that son of a bitch, Jorgensen? What am I dealing with here? Looks like a former employee, sir. Mikhail Kane. Sending everything we've got to your viewcon now. Splendid. Mikhail Kane! So glad you could make it. How is your father doing? I was so saddened to hear of your mother's passing. I didn't know you knew my name. Uh, my, my dad is doing just fine, I guess. He's... Taking it day by day? I can't possibly begin to imagine what he's going through. Or what you're going through. Perhaps we could set a date to discuss this over some zero-G golf at my private course in Luna Raton? <laughs> I gotta admit, you almost had me fooled. The nice guy act was convincing until you started talking about your private golf course. I'm afraid I have no idea what you're talking about. Please... Tell me what's troubling you. Your company tried to get me to cover up what your Mounties were doing, committing horrific murders in the name of company policy, and when I tried to do the right thing and go to management, they threw me to the wolves, tried to make you out to be the good guy rooting out corruption in the company. But do you really think you're fooling any of these people? You're a monster. You take people who need a little hope in their lives and weaponize that hope to turn them into slaves for your company. I'm terribly sorry you feel that way, Mikhail. But I'm afraid we'll have to agree to disagree. I'm sure we both know this is neither the time nor the place. I think this is the perfect time and the perfect place. Right here in front of all your investors, all of your new Nebula Cola friends, it's time to show them who the real Pressy Jorgensen is. My name is Preston Jorgensen, and you do well to respect me, because as you know, I have people on my payroll who have the means to bring a very permanent end to interpersonal conflicts such as these. <sighs> Enough of this. Guards, take him someplace quiet where he can cool off. I have guests to tend to. <laughs> oh, I'm not going anywhere until we settle this, Jorgensen. Once and for all. Hello, Mr. Smith. My name is Officer Pulaski, and this is Officer Tamor. We're from Compliance and Conformity. We just have a few questions for you. Starting with, who sent you? Oh, of course. It was your mother. Hey, hey, no reason to bring people's mothers into this. Just tell us the truth. We know you had help getting in here. All you gotta do is tell us who it was, and we'll make sure you serve your prison sentence in a nice facility away from all the violent criminals. Oh, bite me, you wannabe ranger. You son of a bitch! <laughs> 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 that all you got? Tamar, calm down. He doesn't want to talk. That's fine. We have other ways of making him talk. Please. No, not that. Whatever you do, don't make me... Watch more terrible Yukon training hollows. Bring in the... What the hell is that? Looks like a... Code 8362 Bravo. The product Fabbers have gained sentience? Wait, no, that's a 8362 Foxtrot. 
8362 Bravo is a uh, hostile former employee at the zoo. Oh, okay. Let's move. We'll deal with this piece of trash later. Well, good job, idiots. Just leave the master thief alone. Locked room. Definitely no way he's going to be able to break out. Drop the weapon. We have you surrounded. There's nowhere to run, Mikhail. Just put down your weapon and surrender. There doesn't need to be any bloodshed. Tell that to the families of all the people who've died on your watch. You're the one with blood on your hands. I'd be remembered as a hero if I pulled this trigger. If that's what you feel you have to do, but I promise you, the second that happens, my guards will rain down fire on you. Is this really the cause you want to martyr yourself for? I... I... And I believe that's our cue. Time to go, darling. Ranger, where the hell were you? Why'd you turn your comms off? Long story. Probably best I save the juicy details for when we are far, far away. Uh, okay. Okay, sure. I guess. Wait, did you blow up Preston Jorgensen's house? <laughs> of course not. I wouldn't blow up a whole house. I did make a bit of a mess in the whole bathroom. All right. Less jokey, more running. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to snag the painting. It's all right. Before I started making a scene, I managed to pickpocket one of the guards and got access to Jorgensen's private garden. That's where I got this little beauty. Uh, do you have a plant in your pocket? Not just any plant. Vanda Carulia sublucidus, also known as the Starry Twilight Orchid. One of five specimens of this species in existence. Well, look who's the sticky fingers now. Not quite an invaluable piece of artwork, but you find the right person, they'll probably pay a fortune for it. And a fortune split three ways. I'll finally be able to take the bit and make it legit. Before that, I'd recommend we all lay low for a little bit after this. Jorgensen will be looking for the people who stole from him, and something tells me he won't give up easily. Oh, but... I... Oh... Okay. You're the expert or something. So, what's next for the infamous Bridger? <sighs> After a score like this? I'm not sure. Kind of hard to top what we pulled off tonight. Maybe it's time to retire. I could go back to Mars. Settle down. Little farmsteads. <laughs> God, I could not finish that sentence with a straight face. More theft. Well, I'm not sure if you're looking for a partner in crime, but... Yes. I mean, of course, you're welcome to come with. If you want. Yeah. I'd like that. Scoring a grand slam in that last jam, the Olympus Monstars are leading the Soul Survivors 18 to 13. We'll return to more P to the G Derby action after this star-studded halftime show, sponsored by Nebula Cola. And now try new Nebula Cola Black. The same great Nebula Cola taste with a caffeine kick of coffee for those long hauls across the system. Nebula Cola for astronomical thirst. Well, I am starving. I'm going to go grab something to eat. You want anything? Um, I don't know. Anything's fine. Just please not Nebula Cola. <laughs> Alrighty. I'll be back. Tell me if I miss anything good. <laughs> Will do. 
Hey, it's Bridger. Just wanted to check in and see if you'd received the package I sent you. Yep, things went exactly how I planned. Got caught on purpose, Mick shows up, makes a scene. In the confusion, I was able to lift it off the CNC officer. Yeah, well, I hope your guy plans to look like a Marius Tamor. Nah. I think I'm going to stick around. I want to see how this plays out. Yes, yes, well, good luck with your little mission. And do let me know if you ever need my expertise again. Ta-ta! Hey! Who are you talking to? Oh, nobody. Just checking my comm mail. Well, it just so happens that the stadium has a mini Olympus mount, so I got you your favorite. <gasps> Mouth-watering Mons Meat Substitute! Oh, you're the best! I also managed to snatch a few wallets on my way back, so they're paying. Okay, wow. You are getting way too good at that. Oh dear, have I created a monster? <laughs> hey, I gotta sharpen my skills so I can keep you in line on the next job. The next job? You always know just what to say. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Breathing Space, Fading Frontier. This episode, The Dead End Job, was written and directed by Thomas Fleming and edited by Thomas Fleming and Aaron Olson. Mick was voiced by M. German. Bridger was voiced by Vic Collins. Chip was voiced by Paige Koch. Corinne was voiced by Emma Johanna Piranen. Preston Jorgensen was voiced by Thomas Fleming. With additional voice work by Alice Gira, Cam Clark, Kale Brown, and Chris Allison. Our theme, Blues for the Black, was composed by Michael Freitag with vocals by Jeremiah and lyrics by Scott Paladin. You can find links to learn more about our cast and crew at the show notes and more information about our show at our website, breathingspace.lawofnames.com. Breathing Space Fading Frontier is a Law of Names production. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your refresh and renew break. Did you know that Yukon provides legally required breaks to all associates, regardless of their role? Yep, you're just that important. In the last module, you learned about Yugos. Now, it's time to find out how those Yugos turn into career advancement as you climb the tree of responsibility. First, develop your leadership characteristics. To move from one characteristic to the next, you need to earn 20 Yugos, awarded for performance excellence. When you've earned all of your primary leadership characteristics, LC1 through 16, you advance to the next Maple level. You will then be provided with new opportunities to improve each of your leadership characteristics for your new Maple level, LC1 through 16, you must develop each leadership characteristic for each Maple level. When you have attained all of your Maple levels, ML1 through 8, you advance to the next color category. An increase in color category comes with an increase in salary, benefits, and responsibilities. Remember, everyone, even Preston Jorgensen, started as an innovative green paperbark. Yukon, climbing the tree of responsibility.